Welcome to biology as well as your first video lecture of the year. I'm going to spend an entire year getting to know you guys as my students and as people, which I am very excited about, but I feel like it's only fair that you learn a little bit about me as well. So that's what this PowerPoint is about. There's some about me as well as just some general classroom procedures and some of my expectations of you as a student. So on this side, slide, you can see my daily schedule. So if you ever need me and want to know where I am, this is also hanging right outside my classroom door. So the first couple of slides are just a little bit about me as a person. I'm actually a graduate of Cobb County Schools. I went to Addison Elementary, JJ Daniel Middle School, and I graduated from Sprayberry High School. So I may give you a little bit of a hard time when Lassiter plays Sprayberry, but I really am a Trojan at heart now, so don't worry. I got my undergraduate degrees in biology and psychology from the University of Georgia, so go dogs. You'll hear me saying that a lot over the fall semester as football is happening. And if the dogs lose, heaven forbid, you don't say a word, let me warn you. I got my master's degree in biology education from Kennesaw State University, so go owls. And more than anything, my family is super important to me. That consists of my husband, my two young boys, and our dog, Crosby. My husband and I have been married since 2007. He is in the military. Um, he is currently working for the Georgia National Guard, but sometimes on weekends during drill, you'll hear about him jumping out of airplanes and helicopters, and it's crazy. My oldest is Ethan, and he was born July 6, 2012, so he just turned four. He is a lot of fun right now, and he is super into everything space-related. So anything rockets or planets or astronauts, I have some really great pictures of him in his astronaut costume that I'm sure I will show you later. And then my youngest is Grant. He was born February 5th, 2015, so he's about a year and a half. He's really fun right now. He's learning to repeat words, which is super fun. Uh, the, I think the cutest thing he says right now, and I'm pretty sure he picked this up from his older brother, is anytime you tell him to come do something, Grant, come on, let's go brush your teeth. He says, oh man, which is pretty funny. And then I can't forget about my dog, which is really my first kid, and that is Crosby. He's a miniature schnauzer. Now, just a little interesting fact. Um, I'm not a runner, but sometimes I do run. And in April of this past year, I actually com completed my first half marathon, which is 13.1 miles. And I did it with some of my fellow teachers. So some of these teachers you will actually have in some of your other classes, Ms. Zingler, Ms. Miller, Ms. Accurso, and it was a lot of fun. Now, some of you will have a second teacher in the classroom with me uh, during fourth and fifth period. His name is Mr. Spear. He's a teacher just like me. He knows biology content really well. He can help you just as much as I can. So anytime you have a question, you can ask me or you can ask Mr. Spear. He's been married for about 34 years, and his wife, Mrs. Spear, actually teaches math at Walton. He has two children, and he has three grandchildren, which you can see in these pictures here, and he has a pit bull named Sammy. Just a little history about Mr. Spear, he was actually a funeral director for 15 years. He was a chaplain in the Tennessee prison system. He taught at Simpson Middle School for six years and then came over to Lassiter and has taught at Lassiter for about 11 years. He um, coached ladies basketball. He, is, he was a gymnastics coach, coach assistant for many years, but right now his big assignment is that he is actually the AP test coordinator. So his life gets really crazy busy around May. Okay, so now getting into the course itself and some of my expectations of you as a student. You need to review and print and sign the syllabus that's on my class website, my class blog, um, and you'll see some of this information there, but I'm just going to do a quick review of it so that we don't have to spend time in class. Uh, the way that we grade in biology is the different units have different percentages. So the more time we spend on a unit, the more percentage it's going to be. The less time, the less percent. So nature of science, characteristics of life is our first unit. It's only a few days long, so it's only worth 5%. You can see the other units here. You need to be smart about where you spend your time and energy. You probably want to make sure that you spend a lot of time studying for your genetics test because that unit is a big one. It's worth 20% of your grade. That's not the test that you want to fail. Okay, so keep this in mind throughout the year. So every unit is going to consist of really the same set of grades. You're going to have a unit packet that you will turn in on test day that has sort of all the daily work assignments that, that we do throughout the unit. You're going to have several labs and hands-on activities throughout the unit, and those are going to range between 20 and 50 points. You're going to have projects, some small, some major, so the small ones between 20 to 50 points, major projects worth about the same as a test. Every unit is going to have at least one quiz grade. They're usually going to total up to around 50 points. 
And then unit tests are going to fall between 100 and 200 points, depending on the size of the unit. And some tests will be multiple choice only, and some tests will be both multiple choice and free response. So just a heads up about that. So a little bit more about that unit packet. Your unit packet, every unit, will be due on the day of the test. So whatever you didn't complete throughout that unit, you need to make sure that you have it done by the day of the test because that's when you're going to turn it in every time. Depending on the size of the unit, it's going to have anywhere from five items in it to ten items in it. You are going to be responsible for keeping up with all of that. Your unit packet's going to have a lot of different things in it, but for the most part, they're going to have notes organizers, notes where you take where you write down answers as you watch your video lectures or any organizers that you did as you, you know, read something in the textbook, graphic organizers, any practice work, any web quests or online assignments, small hands-on activities that we do, and then any in-class review. That's all going to be in your unit packet. Now, if you're smart and if you're being diligent with your time, you should have no problem handing in that, that packet on test day. There shouldn't be a lot that you have to do. If you are finding that you're spending a lot of work, a lot of time the night before a test working on your unit packet, then you're not being smart with your time in class. You're not being diligent. If you, this is all stuff that we do in class together. So really, it should just be finishing up a few questions here and there. Okay, a couple things I want to cover: tardies and cheating. Being on time in my class means that you are in your seat ready to work when the bell rings. You've taken your headphones out, you have put your cell phone away. There will be plenty of times where I will let you listen to music or where I will let you, um, you know, use your phone as a resource, but when you walk in my door every single day, you take those headphones out and you put your cell phone away during that warm-up time and then I will give you instructions on when you can take that back out. If you are late to school, you need to check in through PPO in the front office. If you're late to class, I will mark you tardy and synergy. We will move on. But three tardies, no matter what, is going to result in an administrative write-up. Three unexcused tardies will be an automatic write-up. That's not my policy. That is the school policy. Now, cheating. Um, you're going to want to read the syllabus very carefully as to what constitutes cheating, especially because it's a little bit different in a science class. For example, we do a lot of lab group work. We do a lot of collaborative labs where you may be working as a group, you may be sharing supplies and doing an experiment together, but what you write down on your paper needs to be in your own words. Otherwise, it is considered cheating. So look over that on the syllabus, read it very carefully. Um, Late work is never accepted, ever. Unless you have an excused absence when something is due, it is due. So make sure you are turning in things on time and do not ask, can I turn this in late for less points? That's, that's an on-level biology po policy. We are all the same. So I, since that is very clear, I make it very clear when things are due. There's lots of ways you will know when an assignment is due. Of course, I'm going to tell you a million times in class. I'm going to update the class blog, the class website, and then you also can sign up for these text message reminders. So if you haven't done that already, go ahead and text this message to this number right here so that you get messages throughout the year from me saying, hey, don't forget you have this assignment due. So I may send reminders about quizzes and tests and homeworks and video lectures, but I'm also going to send things about, hey, we're meeting in the media center today. So it's going to make your life a lot easier if you sign up for those text message reminders. Okay, if you are absent, I am not one of those teachers who um, doesn't keep up with their class blog. I keep up with my class blog. Every week I give the, you know, what we're doing in class, so check the blog first. I put all electronic documents on the class website, on the class blog, so always look there first. Any paper copies, you can print them out yourself or you can check. There's a silver tray in my classroom, you can check there. See a classmate for notes and then after you have done all of those things, then come to me if you still are unsure of what you missed while you were in class. The, the absent policy is the same across the board. If you have an excused absence, you have however many days you were absent plus one additional day to make up work. And if you are absent on a review day, be mindful of that because you didn't learn any new, new content that day, so you will still be expected to take the test on the original day. Okay, extra help. If you find that you are in need of some additional help, you can always schedule an appointment with me before school or during ASE, and you'll learn about what ASE is later, but it's academic support and enrichment, so you can come for help during those times, but you need to schedule an appointment with me. Or you can check the calendar outside of my classroom door. Every Wednesday, there's going to be afternoon help offered by an on-level biology teacher from 3.30 to 4, unless the test is on a Wednesday. Then the extra help will be held on the Tuesday. So either way, check who's holding the session, check what day it is. That, that schedule is going to be right outside my classroom door. Okay, 
An important thing about my class in particular is I utilize what is called the flipped classroom. That's what you're doing right now this very second. So the traditional classroom has the teacher standing at the room, you know, giving a lecture, providing content, and that may take a day or two days, and you may be the one that everyone is waiting on, or you may be the one who you are waiting on other people to finish, and that's really annoying. Uh, but the flipped classroom, you do the notes at home. That's easy, right? Taking notes, I'm gonna give you a sheet where you fill in answer, that's easy. All the hard stuff that you used to have to do for homework, we're now gonna do in class together. And I'm sure you've been in a class before where the teacher is doing something at the board and it makes total sense to you at the time, but the second you have to go home and do that homework, you're like, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to put my pencil, right? Um, the flipped classroom eliminates all that problem. We do all the hard stuff together now where I'm there, Mr. Spear is there, we can help you if you need it. I will always give you several days to complete a video lecture assignment. Our media center is really awesome about extended hours. They are open like an hour and a half before school starts and an hour and a half after school ends, Monday through Thursday. And then on Friday, they close at, at 3.30, but you can always go to the media center during those times or during lunch to complete a video lecture. So why do I do this? Why do I do this flipped classroom with these video lectures? So that you can work at your own pace, so that you can rewatch the notes as many times as you need to, so that you can have access to a class lecture at home. That way if you're absent or if you wanna review for a test, you can you know access it there. It doesn't, like, it isn't like I say it one time and it's gone forever. And then it provides us with more hands-on time in class. We can do more of those labs and activities and more of that practice work together instead of having you do those things at home on your own. If you ever need me, uh, shoot me an email, or you can shoot Mr. Spear an email. You can see the link to the online textbook. It's here, but it's also on the class website. And then you can see the link to the class website down there at the bottom. And you can access my class website by going to the Lassiter webpage, but you probably already know that if you're watching this video. So I surveyed my students from the past years, and this is some of the data that I got. So I asked them, generally speaking, what were your tools for success in this course? And you can see that the flipped classroom video lectures was the number one selected answer. They could choose as many answers as they want here. So Zondel test review, we'll talk a lot about Zondel, but they found that very useful, reviewing those unit packets, getting those text messages, studying at home, reviewing their warm-up notebooks, checking the blog, all of those things were things that were um, selected by a majority of students. Here, I asked them, what advice would you give to incoming students taking biology with me? And these are some of their answers, so I'll give you, you can pause on this and you can reread those. Some of them are, are pretty funny. Uh, a lot you will see say to watch those video lectures. You're not going to be able to do the best you can in this class unless you watch those video lectures. I love this one, cheer for the dogs. It's a tough class, but you will have lots of fun. I think that about sums it up. And then I asked them, what are your thoughts on the flipped classroom? 96% of students said they found it helpful. When I asked how useful the blog was or the website was to you in this class, 85% said that it was very helpful. And then 97% of my students signed up for those Remind texts, and 91% of them strongly agreed that those text messages really helped them to remember those upcoming assignments and assessments. So I'm gonna end on this slide. I'll let you pause it and uh, read it so that you can have some information about what we will be doing throughout the year. And hopefully this PowerPoint and this video lecture got you just a little bit more excited about what I promise will be an enjoyable course for you. I'm really looking forward to having you as my student this year. Take care.